great. So, um, we starting? Or? Yeah, this we've been here. We've been sitting here for like ten minutes. Um, well, you you invited us. I did. I invited or, you. There's no one here. Yeah, it's just us here. So yeah. No, there's. I, I see chairs. There's well, chairs. I, I can't see the, out there though. I this mean, is like the deadest live studio audience I've ever seen. Yeah. I, mean, I, I invited I invited you. You're in a chair. Uh, nobody said um, I was alive. Are, are we? Are, what's going on? Um, I, there was supposed to be a light. I don't see a light. No. That's probably no. good. Don't look at the light. Um, Definitely don't look at the light. Well. That hurt. Yeah. You're yeah. Mike. Yes. You're Mitch. You're I guess, Devin. I guess we're starting. Depending on which. I guess so. I depending on which video of America's Most Wanted you've watched. Right now you're Devin. Yeah. Hey, and I'm Claire. I got that. Okay. And this is Chatterbox, and we are going to chat, Hi, but we're not in a box. Hi Claire. I don't think. All right, and with that. Speaking of food, I have a question for you all. Sure. What's the question? So, what type of breakfast cereal best reflects your personality? Um, if I was going to choose one, it'd be, it would be the oats. Like, you know, when you walk into a store, like, you go ahead and you walk past the actual cereal, uh, whether it be Kellogg's or uh, whatever, and then you go into the very generic where the box just says oats. I'm the guy who buys that box. Like, that box is literally only there for me. Yeah, I don't know if this question's that relevant to me because I haven't eaten cereal. I usually have uh, bacon, oh. eggs, uh. sometimes French toast. French toast. Other oh. times, oh. maybe, like, a full T-bone steak. Really? For yeah. breakfast. For breakfast. Well, what do you do for lunch? That's how do you follow up? How do I follow up? Yeah. I, I double up. The best cereal that reflects my personality are the Frosted Cheerios. <laughs> Mainly because when you look at Cheerios as a brand, you look at it and you go, wow, that is a very bland cereal. I would probably be Honey Nut Chex. Honey Nut Chex? Yes. Not, not, not Cheerios, no, just mm -mm. Chex. Chex just yourself checks. before you wreck yourself. Because, well, because Chex are just a little bit more fun than Cheerios, but they're still kind of like Cheerios. Average. But then they're Honey <laughs> I don't Nut. Think you're average, Claire. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. But then they're Honey Nut, which makes them a little bit extra special and sweet. And, and you're just Aww. like, wow, this was a nice change from Cheerios. When I was a freshman here on campus, I was very drawn because there were a lot of squirrels everywhere and they were as friendly as the students and you just saw them everywhere and you're like, man, these squirrels probably run this campus and they probably have like underground classes somewhere in the buildings and you know, they act like us, the students, and they, except they never leave and you know, there's all kinds of squirrels here, there's diversity, you know, which is BG is known for. There's red squirrels, there's gray squirrels, there's white squirrels even, there's black squirrels gray squirrels and you can see them all in a span of like five minutes walking around campus. So then I was like man these squirrels are really awesome. Then there was my junior year and I started seeing less and less squirrels and it was really upsetting because I like the squirrels because they play around and they bark and they go and up down the trees and they go around people and you know and I started seeing more and more rabbits and it's like the rabbits overtook the campus because there were only rabbits and there were no squirrels. I could not find a squirrel and I tried looking for them, but they were like none. They were just all rabbits. And I was like, what the heck's going on? This happened for like a whole semester. There were just like bunnies hopping around in the snow everywhere. And then the next semester came and there were less and less rabbits and more and more squirrels. So there was kind of like a squirrel rabbit war where they were kind of like, this is my campus. And then the rabbits were like, no, this is my campus now. And then they like fought and like rabbits go underground and the squirrels stayed up in the trees. But I'm sure like, you know, squirrels had missions to go down underground and be like, this is our town. These are where our classes are. And then the rabbits can't try to go up in the trees but they can't because they can't hop up there because they're too high. And then the squabbit came out and he was like the messiah of the war. And he was a squirrel. He was a really fat squirrel. This is a true story. It was a big, fat squirrel that looked like a rabbit because it had half of its tail cut off. And it was like the messiah. And I was like, these wars need to stop. And the squirrels were like, no, we don't want that. We want this campus to ourself. And ever since then, I haven't seen a rabbit on campus. I was not personally at any battles, but you know, I heard things. Cause squirrels like to bark, they make a barking sound. So I heard them from the trees making their battle cries. 
all the time when I was walking around campus and then like the bunnies would come out and they'd be like staring at them down. They were staring them down. They're like, hey, we're coming after you. And so the squirrels went underground and they're like, these are where we take our classes. This is our university. And they drove out the rabbits to upground, but the rabbits could not go in the trees to get the rest of the squirrels because they couldn't hop up because their claws are too small. So they eventually got drove out by the land squirrels and the tree squirrels threw their nuts at them and they eventually drove them off campus. You know, the squirrels seem to get a little bit closer to people now, but they seem to be like, not as friendly like they look friendly and they like to get up close to you but you know sometimes they actually jump out at people and it kind of freaks them out i've seen that they kind of just like jump out at people and they're like oh my gosh like they're attacking me i think one squirrel actually like ran after a person i think some of them are corrupted yeah i would say that i think some of them are still a little bit friendly but i also think that some of them are yeah very corrupted and but I think some of them are in mourning as well, you know, for the fallen and the missing, because there were, there were two albino squirrels, and I've only seen one nowadays, and it's pretty sad. I don't know where the other one went. I was sad when I didn't get to see the squirrels anymore during the time of the rabbit regime, because I really like squirrels more than rabbits, but all I saw around were rabbits, and but then they came back, but they won't come close to me because I like to take pictures of them, but they don't like to get close to me. So it's impacted me greatly. I was about to ask, um, clearly you brought us on the show for a reason, right? Not just to talk about like our, our cereal, right? Well, what? basically I just wanted to share with you and our, I thought, audience live audience maybe not a live audience don't worry yeah. i just see um, a void it's like my stomach rice. and the viewers at home uh, a few uh new and noteworthy news stories okay for starters a new app is about to be released hmm. in the app Andrew. store Finally. available for all devices that tells the user it ran five miles a day no matter what i actually that's an amazing idea because, you know, I wake up in the morning, I wake up around like 5 o'clock, and I'm like, all right, I want to go for a nice little jog. You're excited. Go ahead and put on that app. I want to run five miles. I'm tired. I just downloaded it. I'm going to use that. I'm, I like that. Do you feel good? You just ran five miles? You're <laughs> well, no, I didn't, I didn't run five miles yet. I just downloaded the app. That's, uh, the, that's the thing that tells me the app well, has done Well, let's know how long it's going to take you to run five miles, because I'm oh, curious. Yeah, okay. Let's just let's, let's see. Let's see. All right, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and see. Yeah. Yeah. So, what you, what, what, uh, let me what, let me open the app real quick. Okay. So wait, tell tell us in full detail what's going on. Well, okay. and do you, so do you accept the terms and conditions. You op you open the app. Okay. I, the, there are no terms and conditions. It's free. Huh. And also, it just automatically posts to your social media. Yes, so. it does. Uh, no. it, it doesn't ask you if you want to or not. It, was, it just kind of does it. It, it hacks great, you. Right. It was a great app until then. We all have that one I'm, person um, who don't really care. I'm scrolling through the settings right now. Okay. I don't care about people sharing stuff. On I'm gonna I'm gonna activate. Activate uh, it, all right. I was gonna time my cheers. lap, or like my five miles. Nice. Let's let's wait and see. Okay, so I'm running. Um, okay. And then. Uh, How far have you gotten? Close. Slow down, speed racer. Yeah, there's there's five miles. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. That's five miles really quickly. That was five miles in thirty seconds. That's pretty yeah. convenient. That's wow. That's that's speed right there. I'm gonna I'm gonna close that app real quick Are you because. Tired? Uh, I actually, like I feel pretty brisk. I feel wow. pretty. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit glistening, but yeah, just like the weather's pretty brisk outside. Right. But I just I like feel to pretty think good. the amount of distance I travel a day. I'd like to think that it, it eventually accumulates to five miles in one day. I mean, coming here wasn't exactly a hop, skip, and a step away. No, so. I, I hop, skipped, and stepped. Well, in that order, or was it a skip, hop, and a step? Just saw uh, that my brother ran five miles. Wow. Nice. Don't Everybody's care running about five that. miles. It's so specific. My brother's such a show. It's a really. It's a nice distance. It's. You know, a little bit more than three, right. but it's less than seven. That's well, true. If you think about it, if it took me about three minutes to run uh, five miles, how long would it take with you to that get to app? California? How long would it take me to get back home, which is uh, actually in the UK? So I have to not just run; I also have to swim skip and then step, and then I have to <laughs> skip step. and a step over the like, ocean. like a like a like over you, the how river you skip and through a rock. the woods. Okay. Well, here's the thing: Does anybody remember like when they were in grade school? Okay, no. and they would go ahead. and do the distance thing. No. Where it was just what like, distance go, thing? Like, 
Oh, I guess I was the one with the grade school. Where like it'd be like uh, this train that. leaves the station going like, 55 miles per hour, 300, 300 mile distance. If this other train train leaves you the station, you did that in grade school. Yeah. Was it like See, in grade school? school, all I had oh. was cake. Seriously. We never did. We never went the distance. You guys didn't do this in grade school. I can go the it's distance. Especially I have a doctor's degree, I'll but be there someday. No, I don't like that song. No. Stop that, please. No, it's going to actually make my ears bleed. Yeah. I have a medical condition. Yeah, it's called like your uh, black hole stomach. Yes. A lot so, of conditions. So wouldn't yes. the black hole in your stomach just rip it apart? Like rip it just, just No, actually it's contained by the lining of my stomach. Oh, kind of like Iron Man. Similar, yes. Okay. Uh, actually, um, I think Stephen Hawking um, helped me get over that issue with the whole ripping apart thing oh. when he released his uh, his latest book. Right. Which Can was I see his newest movie coming out, The Theory of Everything? Um, It's going to be good. I, I, I have a counter movie. It's going to be The Theory of Nothing, and it's going to be a three-hour film. Wait, no, a three-hour film okay. about nothing. Well, who's going to be your main actor? Um, Steven Seagal. The black screen that is just there the whole time. That's a shame. Yeah. Ah, might do good. Better. I don't. I don't even need to buy a camera. I guarantee your ass, your your movie is going to your actor is going to get an Oscar degree before Leonardo DiCaprio. Guaranteed. Right. So it already absolutely. Sounds like, so it already sounds like you got a better script than yep. most vampire movies. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Oh, yeah. um, you drink a snap like a chump. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, this is the good stuff. You gotta stay healthy, man. Have some death sticks. Ah, uh, oh yeah, right, man. So what are you up to tonight? Uh, I'd probably just stay in here. That's cool, man. I got, like, massive. I'm like, I got this paper in philosophy, dude. Oh. Philosophy? When did you go philosopher, man? <laughs> right. I don't know. It's stupid. It's like some ethics thing. Like, uh, if you're doing the right thing when people aren't around, are you still doing the right thing? Some stupid like that. Yeah, maybe, man. Are you doing the right thing? Mm. I mean, I hope. Well, I gotta go. Hey, gotta friend. Go. Later, friend. Take care. Good to see you. Yeah. I will. I'll uh, see you Friday. Yeah, Friday will work, man. I'll see you then. Cool. Sounds good, man. People who smoke, who smoke, just into a family of three. In other news, there was a reported mugging that happened last night on the corners of Oak and Main. It was reported that one man is left in critical condition as the other man is left out on the loose. It was reported that the person being mugged was left out in the alley for five hours unconscious while the other man made his quick escape. If there's any information that can be given about the perpetrator, please call 555-4963. Also, Crime Stoppers and Neighborhood Watch Associations to be, would love to hear for any information that could be given about this incident. Architecture and contemporary design are the combination of skills such as creativity, neatness, and the overall sense of points, lines, and planes into a space.
You okay, Danny? What? Are you doing okay? Oh, yeah, I'm all right, man. <laughs> man, you won't believe where I just woke up. What? Your bed? No, not my bed, man. I woke up outside. How long have you been here? Did you just walk right by me when I was asleep out there? I mean, I've been here since I, since I woke up like five hours ago. Five hours? Dude, that's a really long time. Wow. Oh. Hey, did you hear about that mugging last night? I mean, I saw something about it over over Facebook, but I don't, I don't really know any anything further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, dude, I think I was there. I think I saw it happen. Yeah, like, last night when I was coming home, I was walking, and this guy ran out of this alley, and then he ran into me. And I held him for a second, and I saw him, and then I let him go. I didn't know what was happening, and then I kept walking, and... I saw something in the alley. I swear to God I did it, but I didn't pay any attention to it, so I just kept on walking, right? And the strangest thing is, is that right when I woke up right now, before that, I was having this dream. And in this dream, I was the person getting mugged. And then I woke up and I could see myself down the alley, like as another person. And so I decided to get up and I, and I started to chase that guy, you know? And right when I got up to him and I put my hand on his shoulder to turn him around, I woke up. <laughs> yeah. Weird, right? What do you think it means? Well, honestly, I think it means you need to get more sleep. <laughs> Hell, maybe we will have this uh, dream again. But for myself, I'm going to be a little more productive and go hit the gym. Welcome to Junkie Walk. Yeah, man. I'll catch you later. I think I might need a little bit of sleep. <laughs> Who are you? You know who I am. What do you want from Why? me? What? Why didn't you help him? Help him? What? Wait. wait. Hello? Uh, I would have! Look, I, I didn't know he was there! It's not my fault! I would have helped him if I could have, but I just didn't know. Um, speaking of vampires and things that die, so the dinosaurs. The vampires. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs didn't die. You they see, dinosaurs did, did die. You didn't one time. You didn't see Jurassic Park? They they take dinosaur actors now. There's a whole guild for this. Okay, but a lot of the dinosaurs died. Oh, okay. That's true. And Unfortunately, Andrew Jackson. Scientists, the paleontologists, the people who study the dinosaurs. Paleontology? I thought that was a study of children. No, it's different. Oh. That's paleontology. Oh. Well, uh, well, um, okay, I thought, all right. Don't they drive in vans? <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, don't, they, don't paleontologists drive in vans that have to mm. give out free candy? No. 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 Oh. no. That's, some, that's a different. That's you're, different. You're thinking of the ice cream truck. Oh. Oh, okay. I think I hear one, actually. Oh, no. We, we got... Nope, don't, don't. Uh, oh, uh, no, uh, no. Uh, uh, oh, that's the well, first one gone. Okay. Um, we'll just continue with Dinosaurs. Should we, go, should we go get him? Just, uh, uh, I he's, guess, he's gone. I guess he, we should he's go out after the door. him. He's out the door. Thanks for watching Chatterbox. We got to go find Mike. Oh, God darn it. He ruins everything.